this guy have to say about instantaneous velocity? All right, so can you tell me what is instantaneous velocity? Um, it's your velocity at a particular moment rather than over a period of time. All right, average. got it. And let's see what instantaneous velocity is in our lesson. Instantaneous velocity is really your velocity not average throughout an interval, but at one specific moment in time. A measure of velocity. How would you do this when the distance and time is zero? Well, preferably they're not zero but infinitesimally small, a very small interval. Then it's approximately our thing or our instantaneous velocity. You can watch our calculus series to get more of a sense with this. But today I will explain this instantaneous velocity thing in two ways using algebra and calculus. All right. So, the thing is, when I talk about this kind of thing, instantaneous velocity, I get nostalgic because four or five years ago, I was challenged by an MIT professor to solve a calculus problem involving this kind of instantaneous velocity. So let's take a look. What did Dr. Kabat ask me four years ago? So if I ride my bicycle for 30 miles, and I, if I tell you where my position is as a function of time, um, can I give you that function? I'll write what position was as a function of time. So P of T is equal to T divided by 3 times T squared. That's my position function. And uh, when I was writing, uh, in the first 20 miles, I saw speed limit signs that said 25 miles an hour. And uh, what you've got to tell me is, did I break the law? Well, according to him, there is a bike here. So I actually know how to draw a bike now. I have evolved in my drawing skill. So I believe you draw a big fat triangle here. And then you have where the pedals will go. So, this is the pedals, and then you have this part, and then you also have the other wheel, which I will connect with like this, and then you, no, that's not how you connect. And then, finally, you have the seat, and you have the pedal, uh, well, I mean, the handle. All right, so, Dr. Kabat, is sitting right here so let's just draw him so he has his bike over here so he is biking and this is him <laughs> i know he looks a bit long but it's okay so this is dr daniel kabat he's riding his bike and he's at point here. So here he's traveled zero meters or miles, miles, and then his time initially is zero hours. 1.5 hours is the final. And then he had biked for 30 miles. So DF equals 30 miles. Oh, 30 miles. At his velocity was 40 over 3 t squared, or that was his position function. That was his change of position over time. Slow down to 20 mph, you little burp. All right, so that is not the best inscription, a bit vulgar to say the least, but it says you have to go at 20 mph. And how far was this in? Well, coincidentally, it was 20 miles in. Now, the thing is, I don't know the time in which he encountered the sun, but I guess I'll find out using his clue. And then I would cover it with two approaches. An algebraic approach, which was average velocity, and an instantaneous approach, or a war calculus approach, with instantaneous velocity. So, the algebraic approach was average velocity over a very small period of time. Well, I didn't know what distance it was in, but 
I said that the time maybe was one hour. It, because if it was 1.5 hours, then this must have been fairly close to the 20 MP sign before Dr. Kabat was in when he reached this point. So, D1, well, we know what PFT will be. So 40 over 3, and then T squared would be 1 squared. 40 over 3 times 1 is going to be 40 over 3, or 13 and 1 third. So, 13 and 1 third miles. And so now let's look at the second one, T2. So T2 is going to be T squared equals 3 over 40 P of T. And that gives you somewhat of a predicament over here. But don't worry, we haven't gone off the track. At least I don't think so. So when we well, plug in time, uh, well, I mean when we plug in position function, we get T is equal to 3 over 40, sorry, what was position again? Oh, 20. So that gives us the square root of 3 halves, or what is about 1.2247, or half, which will we will round for our purposes to 1.22 hours. So we know that this was 1.22 hours in, so thankfully one hour was right before the sign. So now let's take the average velocity in this interval because it was only 0.22 out, which is on a small scale for such a long trip. So let's look at what the average velocity might be over this small interval. Hmm, well, that would be 20 minus 13.3. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah, it would be distance over time, which is meant to be 1.22 minus 1. So, which is 1.22 minus 1. And that, that gives us 6.6 .6 over 0.225. And so, that is equal to, um, I would say, about 30. He broke the law. We're going to use him to find what the exact instantaneous velocity might be. Now, um, first I got again an apple. Eh, that was a, a virtual apple. So the apple dropped on its head, and he just came up with the idea of calculus. You reinvented calculus, people. So now it's about 2021 AD, and he's reinvented calculus about f f 300 years from where it originally began. And so this calculus says that we can actually find it using a better, more sophisticated way. So let's say that we want to take the derivative of p prime of t is going to be equal to 40 over 3 t squared, if I'm correct. And then p prime of t, well, the limit of p prime of t is the change in t goes to zero. Remember, we want an extremely small time interval is equal to if you know basic calculus, then you should watch this. But if you don't know basic calculus, then you should go back to our calculus series if you want to see that. And also maybe a match of wants episode or two. Hint, hint. So, P of T plus delta T minus P of T divided by delta T. Now, uh, well, you should probably watch the graph explanation if you're confused with all of this crap, but hey, we don't have time for that here at Barry Science Lab. So, delta T is going approaching zero. So, P T pl plus delta T minus P of T over delta T. So, let's plug that in and we get um, P, no, no, no. That would be 40 over 3 times t plus delta t whole squared. Minus 40 over 3 t squared divided by delta t. All right. Now, we will go to limit p. Okay. And this. All right. So 40 over 3 t plus delta t whole squared minus 40 over 3 t squared over delta t. 
So what I'll do is now I'll expand. So 40 over 3 times t squared 2t delta t plus delta t squared minus 40 over 3 t squared. Oh, oh God. Divided by delta t. Limit is p prime of t is t delta t goes to zero. So that's going to be equal to 40 over 3 t squared minus 40 over 3 t squared, remember? And then plus 80 over 3 t delta t plus 40 over 3 delta t squared. So we have the entire cast over here. So, um, um no, no. That's the same mistake I did when I was resolving this problem because I haven't done it in five years, remember? So, let's um, cancel these out. Limit is P prime of T is delta T approaches zero. You know what, let's just factor out. Delta T, 80 over three T um, plus 40 over three, um, Okay, I'm sorry, I forgot to put the parentheses. Well, divided by delta t, these cancel out, giving us 80 over 3 t plus 40 over 3 delta t. But we said before, delta t must go to zero, thus this entire term goes to zero, and thus the answer is 80 over 3 t. But what was the time at this exact stop sign? Well, it's 1.22 out. So let's just zoom out to get a better route. So 80 over 3t is going to be 80 over 3 times the square root of 1.5, which is going to be 32.6 miles per hour. And that, folks, is way above the speed limit. So way above speed limit. That's a new acronym I've invented. So, yes, Dr. Kabat, I'm sorry, but you broke the law and you're about to get a huge, huge ticket. This episode was sponsored by Brilliant. Get 15% off their premium offer, which consists of multiple interactive courses and very beautiful courses that show you the elegance of math and science by using our link in the description. And recently, they have also f hugely funded me to help me buy lab equipment and create these websites. So, join our link down below and check out Brilliant. And what is your type of learning? Are you visual, auditory, kinesthetic, thing like that? Um, visual, I think, generally. Fourth time we've heard that response. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.